In its original derivation, the term essay literally meant an essay or attempt at a subject or some subject of thought. However, an essay is not merely a short discourse or analysis of a subject or a trivial treatment of it or a generalized contemplation or the expression of a passing mood. It equally represents the writer's mind in the moment when he dwells upon a subject. Thus, the personal egoistic element is fundamental to the art of essay writing. The egotistical factor appears in various forms in different writers. In Bacon, it is his incapacity to take any view not based on his own experience. In Sir Thomas Brown, it becomes, as it were, impersonal. He regards himself as a type of the human race. It is this kind of egotism that highlights Lamb's art of essay writing. He regards every trifling incident in his life to be interesting to his reader, treating the reader as an equal and friend, and therefore taking him into discreet confidence and revealing his private affairs, relationships, memories, longings and regrets. Like Montaigne, it is as though he wishes to, quote, speak unto paper as unto the first man I meet, unquote. This manner of personal revelation is not the romantic egotistical sublime. Lamb does not insist that he is a measure of all things. He treats his experience as being typical of human experience, and therefore personal revelation is qualified with impersonal detachment. In other words, he does not set out to give the impression that he is writing autobiographically or deliberately wearing his heart upon his sleeve. He has a discreet shamelessness which is the hallmark of the personal essayist. He is not revealing but confiding to a reader whom he trusts is not prying out of morbid curiosity. He reveals much but with a mask of impersonality. He effaces himself and his personal history. He might tell us about his childhood, his school days, his boyish holidays, his early poverty, his literary apprenticeship, the drudgery of office work, his relief when he retired from official duties. He might tell us all this and more about his friends, his relations, his brother John, his sister Mary, his father, his aunt, his grandmother. He reveals personal details, his dread of novelty, his dislike of death, his imperfection of speech, his lack of personal beauty, his weakness for wine and tobacco, his sorrow and loneliness, his sad and futile wishes projected through dream and reverie. He expects his reader to judge him fairly and not take the essays as earnest autobiography. As a personal essayist, Lamb, unlike Bacon, does not set out to write seriously or didactically with wisdom and affirmed knowledge, he writes by personal sensation. He writes as a mood takes him, and as a mood dictates a moment's contemplation, whether it be on old china or old actors or chimney sweepers or even dream children. In this sense, he writes in the frame of reverie, personal contemplation either of the self or of life or people. This explains the subjects he chooses to write on. His primary subject is himself, making him a thoroughly romantic writer. But it is not the individual Lamb, but rather Lamb as he was connected with his friends and as his sympathy identified him with the inhabitants of the city in which he bred. He observes himself and his friends and his society with acute perception and with a keen acquaintance with men and manners, and he records his observations with charming liveliness and frankness. He deals with the homely everyday stuff of life, with all the unexpected, inconsistent human things, and he does so with gentle tolerance. He does not moralize or condemn. He takes common human material and imparts a charm and interest to it. In accordance with the art of the essay, Lamb affects a light but not frivolous handling of his subjects. Unlike a more didactic writer, he does not force his opinion on the reader. Nor does he set himself up as the final authority or convey the impression that he is speaking down to the reader. Rather, like a poet, 
he appeals to the emotion and the heart and to the intellect. There may be wisdom in his essays, but he imparts it by persuasion and suggestion rather than by argument and logic. The nature of the form demands this, and the egotism of the essay makes this possible. For the writer's personal experience is always a ready example and illustration. Lamb's use of the personal eye is thus effective, enabling him to present his arguments as his personal feelings. The lightness of treatment identifies the nature of the form and is integral to the art of the essay which, as Johnson puts it, is quote, a loose sally of the mind, an irregular undigested piece not a regular and orderly composition." Unquote. It is an essay, an attempt, and therefore cannot be exhaustive in its treatment. Lamb's essays are indeed brief and confined to aspects of a subject, but despite being fragmentary, impress us as complete within themselves. They have a pronounced informality, which conforms to Johnson's definition there is a certain want to orderly or logical procedure and appropriately so, especially for a romantic essay, which allows the writer the freedom of informal digressive conversation. Hence, his essays may appear to be impromptu as though they are written not without thought, but freely and openly without any after consideration or revision. And this in spite of the fact that he rewrote or altered so many of his pieces. Lamb himself thus defines his essays as, quote, a sort of unlicked incondite things, unquote, which echoes Johnson's as well as Montaigne's, quote, I speak unto paper as unto the first man I meet, unquote. Lamb can thus be classified as a personal essayist. It is a literature of self-expression and therefore subjective, not in the simplistic sense of being confessional, but in the direct play of his mind and character upon the matter of his discourse.